Welcome back, everyone. I am joined by a veteran, the coach of H2K. Now, veteran, we need to look back at yesterday a little bit because somehow, once again, you take one of these big teams, you get to the 20, 25 minute mark, and you turn around a game that really everyone expected H2K to lose. How are you doing this? Well, uh, yesterday, I think most of that was due to the composition and draft phase. Like, we kind of scale in at the same point that they do around the two item mark, but we actually keep scaling, which is something they didn't really have on their team. And we had a lot of good answers to a lot of their champions. We didn't plan to int it for like 20 minutes straight before that. That just kind of happened. Uh, but yeah, I think if anything was like a really big factor yesterday, the Tom Kench pick seemed to have worked out better than expected. That was obviously going to be good into the Syndra, but G2, whenever they didn't know where Tom was, seemed to be really scared to leave their turrets. And we got a lot of free waves off of it. So basically you won the draft is what you're saying? Oh yeah, hard one, but that's like expected by this point. <laughs> okay, uh, someone who is winning you games as well, even when perhaps your drafts aren't as hard won as that game is Sheriff. He's playing incredibly well. You yourself said he's probably the best young player that you have ever coached. Yes. And we have to remember you coached Upset when you were, when you were uh, with Schalke. Oh, so you're saying that Sheriff is better than Upset? Uh, I said that Sheriff possibly is, and I think that he's shown a better performance than Upset this split for sure. Uh, and Sheriff, like the level of confidence that he brings of himself, he really isn't phased. He wasn't phased like at all, even at the start when we were doing poorly or anything like that. He's just really confident in his own ability. And that's exactly what you want when you're working with a young talent like that. Because that's, that's obviously the, the big thing you're looking out for. You know, you want them to feel comfortable. And with Sheriff, that didn't even like take too much of an effort, you know? He, he, he seems to have been born to play on this stage. Well, he's doing very well at the moment, as are H2K, coming from one and eight, now sitting in a position where you're challenging for that final playoff spot. You've got Splice, Schalke, and Rockat left. Do you think you can do it? Yeah, I, we're definitely in the running for playoffs, and I'm very confident that we'll make it. I'm cautiously optimistic about the game today. I'm optimistic about the two games that we have next week. Uh, and yeah, so no one count us out. Well, I can only wish you luck. I'm looking forward to watching all of the games. Thank you very much for joining me. We're going to hand it back across towards Shox on the analyst desk. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much, Medic. I'm joined here by the Fischl and by Freeze to preview our next game. Happy to hear from Veteran that inting was not part of the plan. Ah, all the rest was. Yeah. Everything else. Uh, I mean, the late game was so heavily in their favor, and G2 got shut down big time. They got shut down because H2K and Veteran took down G2 and they managed to stay in the race for playoffs after more than just that impressive win. But most recently, we have to talk again about that G2 turnaround. Massive comeback asset, inting it a bit, getting behind <laughs> of the game. 10,000 gold or more freeze, but how did they turn it around? I'm actually getting quite excited for H2K right now, mainly for Sheriff because I knew he had it in him. I knew that but he just needed to pop off. And now he's popping off once he finally got the space from his team that he needed. You know, with the addition of Shook, with the addition of Selfie, he is showing that he is here. He's ready to show himself off. And then he's focusing on these hyper carries in late game. And you see how much damage he does in late game. He's just getting insane, you know? Yep. It's we a young freeze, a young chick <laughs> 80 <laughs> carry coming on stage, looking hot from the get-go. Yep. We were looking at the Shook effect. Uh, it was a bit of the Shook effect, but it was more the fact that everything else around Sheriff felt probably mm. more comfortable for him. And obviously he has a couple of weeks under his belt and he feels like he can play more to his true potential. However, they haven't made it yet, H2K. They went They're from one and eight yeah, to the miracle it. run. They are yet to play Splice, Schalke and Rocket. They don't have the best head-to-head -head with the other teams around them in the standing. So they have to win them all, basically. Uh, so is this going to be enough then, this late season surge well, from this guy? Hmm. Well, for me, H2K is looking like Splice in the early weeks, but they're facing Splice, right? <laughs> they're mm -hmm. facing yeah, the yeah. evolved version of themselves. So I'm not sure if they can beat Splice. Splice is their fav favorites, but I would give even 40% for H2K. I mean, it's going to be closer than a lot of people expected coming into the week. I feel like also based off H2K uh, winning yesterday. And I don't know, I look at the schedule and I'm... I think it's one of the easier ones uh, for the bottom teams, mm -hmm. especially because next week they play Rocket and Schalke, who are just around them in the standings. So even if they lose the Splice today, if they win both games next week, I think that's enough to at least get a tiebreaker for that playoff spot. So to me, HK are in a very good position. And just as a tidbit, Giants just tied with Misfits by mm -hmm. beating them, and H2K, if they win versus Splice, could join them. So things are going crazy, but that means they would have to beat Splice, and Splice are impressing us just across 
across the board. They are looking to go 2-0 for the second week in a row. And yesterday they won versus Misfits, and it was incredibly clean, at least how they ended out the game. Freeze, once they got an advantage, Splice said, we are running with this. Uh, for me, Xerxes was the man who stepped up big time because they got stomped early game. They got towed over and over again on bot lane, and then they just didn't leave any turrets for Misfits, and Misfits couldn't push uh, the advantage they had. And then late game, once they get the reins, they couldn't, they didn't do any mistakes. Yeah, and I like that on stage, they they become a very smart team mm -hmm. uh, because they knew their combo would outscale. They knew that if they just kept defending mid turret and never took any chances, like never tried to force a fight on their own or make some weird aggressive play they didn't have to go for. So they just sat back, defended that turret for 25 minutes, and the moment Misfits made a mistake, Spice was rushed Baron, took it, and then won the next team fight, the one we just saw here, and finished the game. So it was like super clean in that case where they, they knew we need to just scale and wait for late game. And the moment it got there, executed instantly. Well, I just want to take a moment to look at their growth then throughout the split. I said they went one and one six weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. They were super inconsistent. And now the last couple of weeks, every single member of that team has found its form. The picks and bans are good. The macro is good. So they look very strong. So strong even that it's not just about playoffs for them. It's about that second place, that quarterfinal buy that is now up between them, G2 and Vitality. And yep. Officio, you have so much faith in them. But there you say it again on there that Splice is actually the main contender for that second place. I mean, yeah, I think they're favorites among those three teams to grab second place. And I, it, a lot of it comes down to, of course, you know, G2 kind of falling apart a little bit. Yep. But I think the Splice team have shown they can play early game, they can play late game, and they don't just rely on one player like they did in the, at the start of the split. It's actually multiple members yep. who are playing much better. So I think the Splice team look very well-rounded, and that's why I put them as my favorite to get that second place. For that, they'd also have to beat H2K, and on the other hand, yeah, yeah. they're all fall H2K apart right now. Train, so I, I need a vote. You already said it. Splice is going to take this one first. Well, I still have to mention for Splice that they're so amazing team that they play two different playstyles. You know, you you see G2, they're, they don't even have a playstyle right now. Then you, lo you look at Splice and they have early game and late game. They can play both and perfectly it works for them. So I have to go with Splice. With Splice. The Fischo, no chance for H2K? Uh, definitely a chance for H2K, but I'm going Splice. I still think H2K will make playoffs though. So these <laughs> are two playoff teams for me. So much going on. Both these teams stood victorious yesterday, but only one of them can go undefeated here in week eight. As we head over to Pyra and Vedius, let's hear what Promise Q said about H2K's playoffs run going into the week. I think making playoffs would just mean the world to me, honestly. Like, this is what you like literally live for, and we've been working so hard the entire split. And we started off as 1 7, and we had to go through the roster changes and everything, and just starting all over. So, being able to clinch playoffs would just be like a, a roller coaster of emotions, but I would be mostly like proud of the team. So, we just had to win them all the four left remaining games, and I'm really confident that we can do it because if we play our own game, I think we are as good as any other team in Europe right now. True Cinderella story right there for H2K. If they can finish this run and as make their As good playoffs. as every other team if they play their style. That's what I'm going to be looking forward to seeing. They took down G2. Let's see if they can do this. They beat Misfits twice. too already. That's very true. Yeah, there are a lot of things. Now let's take a look on the team at the teams on stage. H2K on the blue side. And Vettius, I don't know about a new sheriff in town, but the one they got is certainly doing his job well. He certainly is. He's a big carry that we need to keep our eyes on. We saw many uh, up-and-coming AD carry talent coming into the split. Upset was the big hype man. Trupax was the guy that was considered to rival him. And Sheriff, he kind of went under the radar, but progressively throughout the split, he's been getting better and better and better. And now he goes up against kind of one of the staple, even considered MVP candidates in Cobbett. This guy has been so solid for Splice, and he was a big part of their early success during the regular season. He was an individual that you put him on the carry, you look at him and you say, hey, when it comes to these late game fights, we're relying on you to step up. And he was getting penta kills. He was the one keeping the team alive. And if he ever fell behind, well, the team kind of struggled. But now Splice have evolved past that. They can rely on their other players, but that doesn't mean Kobe has gotten any worse. No, and that is definitely going to spell a little bit of danger for H2K. We'll see if they can overcome and keep that miracle run going as we enter picks and bans here. Once again, every single game matters. Splice looking to contest up towards the top of the standings, looking for that playoff by H2K, trying to stay in the race. These bands are coming hot and heavy, though. It's Camille, Zach off the board, followed by another Anivia. Now, Selfie did play one Anivia game during... Uh, one of his first debut games, actually, uh, onto the LCS. He didn't have the best performance, but Splice clearly have a strategy in mind where 
Uh, that Anivia could perhaps get in the way. We've seen how effective it can be against low-range champions, things like the uh, Sive, for example. Maybe even the Scion, given how effectively you can just throw up that wall. And Scion is currently available for both teams. Galio still ready to go. Sejuani, another potential power pick, along with the Rise and Azir. Many, many strong picks available in the current patch. That's one of the reasons why we do see teams slightly favor red side in the current meta, because, well, I mean, why not get two power picks over one? Well, that's usually good math for sure. Now, the Galio is removed uh, on Splice's side. Definitely want to zero in on that Kog'Maw, because that was something that Sheriff had to great success the other day. Rise also taken away. So only 180 carry ban, a handful of mid laners. Zyra Khan still up and available. Could be something that Sheriff looks to lock in. Remember their epic game versus Giants, where Sheriff had that amazing quadra kill to defend the base. Could be something that they look to prioritize. Caitlyn is another one. One of Sheriff's preferred uh, AD carries, and it will give you that strong laning phase, and it's just a trend that we've been seeing for a lot of European teams right now. He's got that name synergy as well. Now, it's over to Splice. Maybe they opt to take the Zyra Khan. Of course, Kasing is, is a is a different type of support. We've seen the Zillion out of him. Talk about keeping his team alive. I wonder if they do lock it all in or if they focus more towards the jungle, more towards the top. Cersei, Oduwamne, both been stepping up in their roles of late. Well, remember, Scion's still up and available. One of the most contested picks in the current meta, and Splice is going to secure that. We'll remember this time that it can be flexed to both mid that, and That is true. Top. I think so, it's more likely Odo takes it than One Nisky, would though. expect, but it depends on what H2K choose to do. If they go for a counter pick, like a trundle, then you want to move it out of that lane, put it in the mid where it can have a little bit more of an impact. But perhaps if it's something like a Cho'Gath with its Okay, it's just a farm lane. They perhaps choose to keep him in the top. So we'll keep our eyes out for that. Right now, Splice choose to round out their second half uh, of the first pick phase with a Tristana. So a little weak during the laning phase, very similar to what we saw in game one. But that means the H2K now have the freedom. They can lock themselves in a Jarvan, perhaps. Maybe get themselves a Sejuani. Both very common junglers that Shook has looked to prioritize. And interesting, the H2K may look to get themselves a solid mid laner right now, rather than getting themselves a safe Cho'Gath to try and answer the Scion up in the top lane. Or alternatively, they don't want to try and get themselves a support either. Ah, but still switching things up. We have a few more seconds before it, it ends up getting locked in. Do we go and see that farm lane up towards the top side? Cho'Gath still healthy scaling into the later stages of the game, and as the timer ticks down, H2K will lock it in to pair with that Sejuani. Big beefy front line for this H2K squad. Now remember, Spice do have the ability to flex. If they have the counter pick for the Cho'Gath, they can save that for later on into the draft, and they move the sound down into the mid lane. That's not quite what I'm expecting. I think that for Splice right now, they're going to look to try and save their support for the second half of the draft as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do, in fact, choose to lock in their mid laner right now. Oh, but of course, Skarna. How could we forget Skarna? My word. So many power picks in the current meta right now that some yeah. of them just slipped through the cracks. Well, that one certainly did. So it's locked in for Xerse right now to pair up with that Scion. There's definitely a lot of ways Splice can catch out opposing members there. Now, you would expect Splice to ban away the Tom Kench because he is one of the biggest counters. It kind of alleviates the need to always go for the QSS because you can just gobble up the target that ends up getting rooted on. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if Splice looked to ban away those supports that basically just make Skarna's life a little bit more difficult. Still got one more ban to go for the Splice side. This is the Alistar that they took off the board already. Well, let's see what H2K decide to answer with. Taking their time, H2K are actually going very slow and deliberately through this ban phase, and it's Janna that they actually opt to remove. Showing a lot of respect towards Kasing. He's, he's played a lot of supports. Braun, Tom, Janna, and Zillion are all his most played at three games each. Guess which one of those is not like the others? Uh, the Zillion. I was going to say the Janna, but okay. Oh, also true. <laughs> <laughs> so they choose not to ban away the Time Kench. They may look to pick it up for themselves. Always an option. Great as an answer to the Sejuani in the later game as well. And given that quite a few supports have already been banned off the board, would not be a terrible pick. The Zillion being thrown out as well. So a lot of respect going towards Kasing. I think the Time Kench would make a decent amount of sense right now for Splice. It would allow H2K to go for the Caitlyn Braum down towards the bottom side. And I think that would be the most logical option for Splice. Okay. Still taking their time as well. And Splice might end up opting to take away the Tom Kench themselves. A lot of flashing back and forth on this last pick, but maybe they want to save it for the end. It's the Azir coming in for Niski. Old standby, his most played champion. It seems very odd to me. Like, they were hovering the Tom. We talked a lot about how Tom seems to make the most sense. They could have saved the option of the Scion still being a flex pick, 
forcing Selfie to pick a mid laner, which then could have given Niski the winning matchup. But he says, you know what? Most of the mids are banned out. It will kind of force Selfie onto maybe an Echo that we did see, or the Vigar as an answer. But I feel like going for the Azir now just gave H2K more options in the draft. And they're going to go for the scaling. So Cho'Gath in the top lane against Sion. Pretty strong winning lane. Caitlyn down towards the bottom side. Loses a little bit of pressure with the Tom Kench, but it's still powerful. And I think the Tom Kench could act as a very effective answer to the Skana as well. I think overall, if it is locked in, H2K drafted themselves a very well-rounded comp, more geared towards scaling, but they still have winning lanes that they can look to play around. And instead, they're going for a little bit more lane dominance with the Brawn. Personally, okay. not a fan. think the Tom Kench makes more sense, but H2K, they're confident with it. I mean, maybe they're worried that they might fall a little bit far behind. We saw that happen yesterday before they could bring it back and up against Splice. That might be a difficult thing to bear. Now, last pick. We're still waiting to see what Kasing's choice of support will be. He's been known for some interesting picks in the past. Let's see if they go for some extra laning damage as well. And it's the Lulu locked in. We got a Yordle bot lane, Vettius. So you can look to be a little bit more aggressive in the two versus two when you're paired up with a Lulu. A new range support that, while Kasing has played it so far during the regular season, hasn't seen much prevalence. And I think that still, because of Tristana, she is rather weak in terms of the very early laning phase. Caitlyn vastly outranges her and can put a lot of pressure down. The fact that you have a range support paired up with you as well and decent wave clear on the Tristana could make this 2 vs 2 a little bit easier for Splice, but you're also setting up Kobe to be this big carry again in the late game. You do have the Scion, so there's a top lane that you can potentially play through, but the Azir in the mid just going to be focused on scaling. Will not struggle really against the Vigar during the early laning phase, but in these mid to late game team fights, going to be much harder to execute against the small wizard of evil and death. Very apt description. Now, for Splice, it does seem like they've gone with with a very time tested style of composition that that they've had so much success on. Would you have liked to see something a little bit different out of this team who has had their other players really stepping up in recent weeks? No, I think the, the draft from both teams is fine. I think both are geared towards scaling up into the late game. I think both have lanes that they can look to play around. Uh, and I think that both teams will largely just come down to execution. Uh, I am question marking the Azir pick just given where it was in the draft because it gave uh, Selfie this Vigar, which I think is going to be really the big swing point in the fights to come. And also Sheriff on his comfort, picking the Caitlyn. I have high expectations for him to really match the kind of pressure that Kobe is looking to do for Splice. Once again, the playoff race is getting incredibly tight. Splice clear in the lead, looking for that second bye if they can secure it. However, H2K still trying to vie for a playoff berth altogether, which would be an incredible turnaround from how they started this split. We heard from Promise Q earlier about what a big thing it would be for him and for the H2K organization. Well, Deficio is a believer in H2K. I've heard a few other analysts be believers in H2K as well. I believe even Brock saw on PGL yesterday said that he could easily see H2K making it. And given that the organization itself has quite the history of making it into playoffs. They do. I think that c considering the gamble, I guess you could say, they took on this roster mm -hmm. uh, for things to work out would definitely be a great way for them to end their regular season. Yep. And now as things get underway, we see the infamous Skarner minigame playing out on stage. Zersei already finding some of his pillars already taken away. No shenanigans inside the jungle, though, just yet. But as you mentioned, this will be a very scaling-oriented game. Expectations are, from me, Pyro, that early game will not have a huge number of ganks. There won't be a huge number of action. And I think we're going to see a very similar thing to what we saw when H2K kind of went up against G2, where the comps really come online past the 25-minute mark. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because, uh, I mean, come online is one way to put it. I liked Veteran's description, int for 25 minutes and then win the game. Just H2K thing. I mean, I think they should avoid inting. Uh, I agree. First 25 minutes, and I think with the comp that they're going up against, it'll be better. But yeah, what a great win for H2K in terms of confidence, in terms of position in the standings. They needed that win in order to stay really in contention with all the other teams that are fighting for that playoff spot. They found it. And now getting a win over Splice could be huge to them as well. We talked a lot in the last game about how every single game matters. This one is just another example of that. Will they close the gap between themselves and Giants, who picked up a win? Or will they separate themselves from some of the top six teams? So many things 
to look forward to over the course over this day and next week. It's really coming down to the wire in that playoff race for sure. Nothing is set in stone. But it is just so impressive to see the growth out of H2K. And yeah, they did a lot of shakeups. It was hard to tell exactly how strong this team would be. There were you know, a lot of mentions of the Shook effect. We're seeing him on screen right now. Very decisive player, bringing some experience to the some of the newer members of the H2K roster. Selfie also coming in as well. But it is important to note how well Sheriff has done in the last couple weeks. We've seen him on these late game carries, and this is why Caitlyn's a favorite of his. He just pumps out the damage. Yeah. And on the other side for Spice, they're fighting for that second place spot. It's really important for them uh, to be able to kind of end that way when you consider the amount of criticism. I was one of the big critics of the team. Uh, I said that coming into the split, they would be really strong and they'd gradually fall off. The opposite ended up happening and they ended up becoming a strong playoff contender. Uh, and they want to solidify themselves as a top team in Europe. This, this team was thrown together full of veterans. Like you look at the names across the board and you can see all of them have experience. A lot of these players have gone to Worlds. And it's a... I don't know if I'd call it a star-studded roster. At least that wasn't necessarily the expectation coming it's in. It's definitely bright and shiny, though. But it is, as you rightly said, bright and shiny. And every single name you see, you'd kind of expect greatness from. So it's nice to see that Spice are reaching that point. They're now 9-6. and six, And a win here will temporarily put them in a solid second place. Yeah, and I think it's 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 worth noting how how they've been able to get to that point too. If you look at their game yesterday, it was just so incredibly clean. They were able to close it out. I mean, from from Baron take to game end was pretty much the exact duration of the Baron buff up against the Misfits. I mean, that that was that's as clean as it actually gets. Yep. Certainly is. Uh, they'll be looking for a similar performance today. As, as expected, we haven't seen a huge amount of action in the first five minutes of the game. It's been relatively slow, focus on farming. Pretty much all the lanes are even, with a bit of an advantage built in mid, kind of as we would expect from a Azir versus Vygar matchup, where in the early game, Vygar, so short range, doesn't have the best wave clear. It's very easy for the Azir to punish him. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth noting as well that Selfie's the one who hasn't played the Vigar this split compared to Niski, but there's a reason that Champion has been kind of coming up every now and again when you have some of those bands uh, in the mid lane, especially with the likes of Galio, other safe choices like that off the board. It's because the later this game goes, Vigar gets really freaking scary. It's true, but one of the bigger things is the the event horizon and how much impact it can have in zoning away someone like an Azir from a fight. You, it becomes a lot harder to do the Sharima shuffle, and he is a relatively like mid-range mage that the event horizon can really do a good job of just zoning you away from. So uh, I think that Vigar overall is, is a, a great pick into Azir later on into the game. But in the early game, we want to see Niski Maybe even camp this lane once the level 6 comes out from Zerse, get the Predator up, get the flank off, force a flash out. Maybe go for an early kill down onto the, onto the small bringer of doom. Well, we've got a few more minutes before that level 6 will come into play. So let's, let's zero down in on the bottom lane because you mentioned how the lane dominance should come in for the Ortle bot lane. But for the most part, both these AD carries have been really doing their jobs effectively. Kabe has been especially a standout performer on the Splice team when really no one else was. Yeah, uh, and this is their stats from patch 8.4, so that was yesterday and last week. You can just see how much Sheriff really has stepped up. The average damage per minute that he has thrown out, it was brought down a little bit yesterday, last week. He had an average damage per minute of 1.2k. Uh, and Kabe, the difference in damage that you're seeing is now just the, the fact that He's less of the Reliant. You don't rely on him to be the big carry anymore, but he still contributes significantly to the success of Splice. That's true. Another thing is that Splice, you know, for a long time known as this very late, late game team, actually have the fastest game time on patch 8.4. So something is definitely closed up in terms of how long they take to execute things. So Kabi doesn't need to do as much damage per minute because he ended the game so much faster. This ties in with what we've been hearing about Splice and that they are a very smart team. They seem to very well understand what to do when they get themselves a lead, how to set up the side waves, how to play towards the win conditions of their comp. And overall, if you give these guys a finger, they end up taking a hand, I believe is the old expression. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a little gruesome, but yeah, I believe you called them a more fun name earlier, Fandabulous. Fandabulous. I love that, actually. And Zeus, they just stole a blue. That is also pretty And awesome. that's where you'd bring out the dab emote. Ah. That it would be that situation. Do we allow those on stage? Not yet. That'd Perhaps be really sweet. Future. Rito, please. All right, so Zerse doing the two-step inside of the event horizon. But yeah, or excuse me, Niski. Zerse uh, feeling pretty happy, so he can wiggle back into his own jungle, and, and Shook's denied for the time being. 
It's also great because it means both jungler and mid laner get a blue, and there's oh, no yeah. better feeling. Sharing is caring. I loved reading that Yanko's tweet the other week where he said, love giving my mid lane a blue buff, and then he uses it to steal away my Raptors. Um, it's definitely something I actively do. But let's see if Zuse can steal away someone's life as he has his eyes on Smitty J. Right, wiggling in, unstoppable onslaught. The science coming in as well, and there's the impale, the one, two. How do you do? First blood for Odo Wamne. That was a very easy kill. Um, Clean. If you will call it. Setting up Odo Omne for success. We talked about how top lane could be a lane for Splice to gank during the draft. They find an early kill, and it is on to Smitty J. Uh, which happened yesterday against HDK as well. G2 camped the living hell out of Smitty J, uh, and then he got his revenge also on the Cho'Gath, I want to point out. But things are off to a good start for Splice right now. First Blood got themselves a 1,000 gold lead, and that was a perfectly executed play. Now Selfie looking to turn about fair play, grab the blue buff away from Splice. So they do turn it back around there. So Zeus being very clever there, you see. He gets himself the enemy blue buff. He then ganks top, and it's not his fault that his mid laner doesn't get blue. So next level mind games to deny the mid laner the blue buff. But then he's hoping, hey, listen, Selfie can have it for the first portion of the laning phase, but if we kill him, Niski, then I can buff transfer the blue to you and it refreshes. So it's all part of the long con from Xerse. Clearly understanding jungle pathing and how to keep his mid laner happy. Well, Xerse is definitely uh, a player that has earned a reputation for not just being a fearsome jungler, but also a very intelligent one. Very he true. made a big splash last year on the Unicorns of Love, and we saw him towards the latter half of the year really step things up even further. And this is why we talked about Splice being uh, a bright and shiny roster, because Zerse was one of those big up-and-coming players. And I feel like he had a fantastic performance yesterday on the Zac. His use of the slingshot to help wave clear in the middle lane to help stall out against the Siege from Misfits was fantastic to watch. I think that he has developed a lot as an individual. And I loved hearing from Kasing when he was on the podcast um, about how Different people on the team had different ways of playing and how Niski and Zerse, because they're kind of newer to the LCS and they don't have the same experience as the other three, that Zerse and Niski were still trying to figure out how to play the Legends. And Odo, Kobe, and Kasing all had one way and it was different from the two younger players. And they had to kind of come to a compromise and an agreement on how to play it. And now that everyone seems aligned, you can just see the fluidity in the League of Legends and how everyone is a lot more comfortable in the calls that are made and just overall how much more trust there seems to be in the players of, of each other. And that makes a world of difference, especially for a, a team that is composed of, as you mentioned, younger and older players uh, coming from different times in the evolution of League That's of Legends. True. Now, we're 10 minutes into this game. As you pointed out, it, it's definitely going to be a little on the slower side. I would not be surprised if Xerse makes a return play up towards the top, though Smitty J does seem to be a very gankable top laner. I mean, he didn't use any summoner spells, and it's very much about how the lane is set up. Uh, if Zerse wants to be a good jungler to his mid laner, I feel like mid should be the lane to gank, but a lot of wards are coming out from Promise Q. He's investing a decent amount of vision into the river and the enemy jungle so that he can control the bottom side of the map. And they could be setting up for an early Cloud Drake, but overall, love this vision setup that we're seeing from H2K. Mm -hmm. They themselves have definitely developed over the course of the split. As Zerse, he's coming up here. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Let's see if he can grab Smitty J. There's the onslaught. He's going to flash away. Let's see if he can turn around in time. The bullet's coming out. Shook's trying to give him more than they bargained for, but they take him down again. The Romanian rumble of Odo and Zerse pushing back. Shook with the help of Nitsky. Emperor's divide and down to zero. Splice picking up two kills up top. Nice roam from Niski helps get Splice an additional kill onto the jungler of H2K. This is a great early game for Splice, demonstrating that while we can get to the late game, we don't need to rely on it, and we can build ourselves a solid early game need. Oh, boy. Splice Boy's definitely off to a solid start right here. The gold lead will extend itself another 1,000, or about 500 or so. Rift Herald being started off, but let's go back and take a look at that play as it was set up once more with Shook and Xerse waiting in the wings. Now, what's key to note is how quickly Niski can roam towards the top side because the gank on the Smitty J pretty standard. He's a little overextended. The amount of CC that they have is pretty solid. But look, Niski's already here. Vygart hasn't even started moving yet. He's primed and ready to join. He knows he can help get the kill onto Shook, and even if he flashes, boom. Shreem a shuffle there to help get the assist. The ulti knocks him nicely into the Scorpion and the Undead Beast. 
results in a clean 2 for 0 and an extension of the gold lead for Splice. Does it still count as a Shurima shuffle if he has to flash for it? I'm going to say yes. All right. Because he All shuffled right. his booty in front of his opposition, and he slid him into death. Good play by Niski for sure. That's another player who's also been stepping up uh, in his role. Yes, he's been, you know, mostly on, like, farming mid laners and whatnot, but he definitely has playmaking I ability. Mean, I will say I called Niski bad. The start of the split. When did you oh, start of the split? Okay. He, he lost a lot of lanes I mean, it's in true. winning matchups. I will never forget when he played Azia into Rise and lost. Then he played Rise into Azia and then lost. Um, and this was the very beginning of the split. Yeah. So I felt like my criticisms were credible. Um, but he, as you rightly said, he has grown a lot over the regular season. He has been able to hold his own a lot more in lane. Even on champions like Azir, he's having a great impact on the side lanes too. And this is very much what we talk about. The show is not all about the bottom lane, even though that's where the gank is happening right now. now the counter gank coming in as well. Promise Q tanking up a few more shots of that explosive charge from Kabe. Show kind of waiting in the wings, does not have a flash available to hop over the wall. Would need Arctic Assault to make it happen. And Cersei spotted, going to back off. See, a lot of movement, though, by both junglers trying to influence the pace of this game to get things off to an earlier start. We talked about it being slower, but it doesn't mean there isn't going to be action. And Shook returns to the blue buff. It's Consolation Prize this time around, and he should be able to pick it up. Maybe he's thinking the same thing that Xersei was. I'll get it now, and then I'll get Selfie a blue buff later. Maybe. I mean, Niski, he's ahead of the game. He's like, not this time. I will take the blue buff. Want something done right, time. you got to do it yourself. Exactly. So you say he's hanging around. He does have the smite, but Niski's like, no, it is my turn to shine. I want to point out, I've been on the Niski hype train since Twisted Fate. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Good for you, Pyro. Yeah. I was not aboard that train. That's okay. I right. had a very comfortable first class seat. <laughs> uh, now, Splice moving up towards the top side. Uh, question I wanted to raise. Um, one that we can discuss a little bit was Asia K invested a lot of vision towards the bottom side of the map. Splice said, nah, we don't really care about the bottom side of the map, and they've only ganked top and played towards the top side. And this nets them a tower as well as the Rift Herald. And it just makes me wonder what H2K's intent was with all this bot side vision, because it felt like they didn't really do anything with it. They didn't secure an early Drake, they didn't successfully get themselves the bot tier one, and they haven't really made much happen with the vision that they invested in. So just makes me wonder what the goal of the vision was. Something to explore perhaps in uh, VOD review. But it's definitely uh, an interesting focus because for Spice, their vision has mainly been in the topside river. They wanted to control that so it becomes easier for Zerse to set up ganks and really to get Oduwamne uh, ahead. Yeah, and, and ahead he certainly has completed two items, including that banner of command. And uh-oh, Vedius, there is only one charge of minion dematerializer. On Promise Q. Ooh, rough, rough, rough. I think he should have saved them. Perhaps, perhaps he should have. We'll have to see. Remember that Splice, 2,000 gold lead against a comp that still does scale well. Both very much aimed towards the team fighting, scaling, later game option. H2K have the much better Baron control because you have the Cho'Gath, who has that secondary smite with his ultimate. So Splice, they can't just rush it down unless they have full vision control and they're able to do what they did against Misfits and just punish a small mistake. They'll have to really kind of find a successful pick or a fight, which right now they're in a good position to do. But H2K are looking to get themselves their first tower of the game. See if they can secure it with the help of Shook. It might be in for a dive right now. Cobb is stepping far up, two stepping his way away from the Winter's Bite. Shook unable to find a point of ingress, though. Kabe and Kasing are able to push back the minion wave in H2K. Meanwhile, Aniski Odawamne have double teamed up in the mid to try and charge down the wave of minions there, but Selfie is able to keep them at bay. I like the use of the Banner of Command. Oh, that's makes that's unfortunate like for Selfie. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's trying to draw the minion aggro, but it will get a decent chunk of damage down onto that tower. That, Shook being dragged down as well. That minion is bigger than he is. Yes. Don't tell him, though, because he'll get really upset, and he will try to blow up your house. I stop short. <laughs> You're just pushing the limits with Vigar, aren't you? Uh, well, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So now, multiple members of H2K grouped up around the middle lane. About a 3k gold lead in favor of Splice. I'm looking at Xerse right now, because he's sitting in that brush waiting for Sheriff to return to the lane. And he's got his eyes set on stabbing the AD carry of H2K and dragging them into his team. You were really big on the graphic descriptions today. Oh, I think it, it really yeah. sticks in people's minds, you know? It helps people you watching, remember. like, Black Mirror or something? No, I am not. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't watched much TV recently. I've only really watched League of Legends, if I'm honest. Uh, I've had to watch a lot of teams. There has been a lot of League of Legends lately, uh, oh, there as there always is. But KT versus uh, KSV it's was fantastic. Long, it was a good, good series. All right. So, but back into this game and back into this region. Remember the playoff race. 
for H2K, they don't necessarily need to win every single game, but they pretty much do if they want to make sure they can control their own destiny, and they still are going to need some help here. Splice, they only have to win, and they're guaranteed playoffs. Yes, that's an excellent point to make there, Para. Ooh, flash out. You can, you can continue to make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, follow up on that point. As you rightly said, Splice, they get themselves a win, they lock in playoffs. Um, now, for H2K, the amount of wins that they need kind of de depends on the success of others as much as it does themselves. Because now that Giants got a win earlier in the day, it puts more pressure on H2K to succeed because now there's a team that is in front of them and not tied up, right? So it's, it's one of those situations where all of the bottom teams are battling against each other. And it's next week when they actually have to battle each other rather than the teams above them that things really start to get spicy. So the more wins you have coming into next week, the better you are set up in order to, to secure that playoff spot. Yeah. And for HSK, have already taken down the likes of Misfits, have already come back miraculously. I really don't know how else to describe it against G2. It almost feels like taking out a splice would be just another checkbox tick, but it would be nonetheless incredibly impressive against a team that has played so, so clean. And even in this game right now, keeping this gold lead about where it's been, as we crest 18 and a half minutes into this game, splice continuing to play around that top side, even with their duo laners uh, occupying that space. Now, HUK continuing to scale up. You can see that Caitlyn approaching the two items, pretty healthy point in the game. Selfie actually going for the tier itemization, wants that shielding from the Archangel staff that will be able to help him have that extra bit of survivability in these late game fights. Uh, but obviously it will take quite a while to scale up. He will be spamming that Q a lot though, so uh, the stacks from the tier will not take that long to come about. And meanwhile, the uh, Banner of Command has been completed for Smitty J. So these items rolling through. Baron going to be spawning in about 45 seconds, so that will likely be the big win condition. HGK now pivoting their vision control towards the top side. You can see all the wards that they've invested. You can see that their goal is to take down this tower. And it's very much saying to me, H2K, they want the Baron, and they want to make sure that they do not give control over the Splice. Yep, trying to keep it even pace at the very least for Splice, not letting them grow that gold lead anymore. And, and crucially here, you know, they, they have really stopped this bleeding at the moment. Smitty J, who had been beat up a number of times between Xerxes and Adewamne, has been able to farm relatively unopposed down towards the bot. Leads a line of minions in here for Odawamne to try and finish off while that second tower is oh so close to falling, but it should. Just a few more moments. Odawamne is actually going to let it happen. And let's see. H2K moving into the Splice jungle here. This is a little deep right now. Let's see if they can find the pick off. Xersei trying to push them back. Trying to contest for Aspire is not happening. It looks like they'll just be stealing away a red buff. And it's all points to what you're saying, Vedius. They want to get all that vision to set up for the Baron. H2K maintaining really solid control over the top side of the map right now. Even stealing away the red buff when they're the ones that are down in gold. They have been able to get a bit of global gold back into their pockets after securing both the top and the bot outer tower. But Splice should be the ones applying pressure. They don't feel confident enough to do that just yet. And HDK doing a great job. We're building up to that point, Pyro, where the fights will be explosive. Execution is going to be a big deal in how these fights play out. We've got to keep track of the number of QSSs that have also been built because that's going to be a key item in mitigating some of the pick potential that Cersei will be able to bring. Well, I can tell you the current number right now. It is zero. Nil. That is uh, going to be happy for Xersei. Yes, he, has he is very useful target. at the moment. His eyes will definitely be on the Vygar. Oh, yeah. He will, will want to snatch him up and quickly take him out to mitigate as much of his damage as possible. And it's interesting, right? Because you can actually chain CC really, really well. So you drag them in with the um, Skarner ultimate. You then use the Azir wall to knock them back even further. Then you whimsy them so that they can't flash or anything. And then if you really want to be BM, you use Tristan ultimate to knock them into your Nexus. Or um, you have Scion just headbutt them with his ultimate. That could also happen. Yeah. So there's a lot of tools to basically pinball anyone they choose. Yes. On the side. You can literally throw them all across the map. Uh, if they had an Alistair, that would be the only way it could get better, but they banned him. 
So. Unlucky. The dream will not come to fruition. Now, HOK actually starting the Baron. Remember, Cho'Gath, really good at securing this. Let's see how they use it to beat some of the summon spells out from Splice. Already down to half. There's going to be a teleport coming in for Odoane. Splice trying to collapse. They're going to be able to get there in time. This Baron is certainly going to go down early. Smite right now. Zerse has come in. It's going to be finished off by Sheriff, but the fight is on. Zerse is a big scorpion in here, but Kabe has already taken out his opposite number. Promise Q soon to fall. That's a double kill for the Tristana. Smitty J going to be left for dead. And so is Shuck. Pushed back by the Emperor's Divide. Splice will leave. None alive! Except for Smitty J, excuse me, Selfie, he's gonna live, but that's just about it. And a triple kill for the Tristana. Holy moly, that was not a worth Baron. Splice might lose the Baron, but they decimate H2K. 7-0 to zero in the kills. Splice take the whole jungle. They're gonna look to take more towers. And while the play itself looked good from the outside, H2K could not get away with their lives. Yeah. Splice able to pull off that collapse. Selfie lives to tell the tale. He's got the Baron buff on, but this is going to give so much advantage over to Splice. A huge gold swing for them. Three and a half thousand now in the lead, and they should be able to finish off this bottom tower without anyone there to contest. Kobe got three kills in that fight. Yeah. He is definitely going to be one happy AD carry. Now, Splice, they only secured the outer tower in the bottom lane but securing that many kills is fantastic. Now, we talked about teamfight execution. Very early Event Horizon allows Zerse to just dive in, lock up the AD carry, and he is blown up immediately. Selfie zoned out of the fight from Odawame, who then gets stunned up, but Nitsuki's like, my eyes is not on the cleanup. I've got to get these extra targets. Unfortunately, I cannot get onto Selfie, but regardless, we can kill out the jungler, and we can get an extra kill down onto Kobe. Yeah, so we talked about how Splice was going to want to lock up and, and knock back Selfie all over the place, but it's just as well that they can get everyone else on the team. And everybody played the part in that last team fight. 7-0 to zero in the kills right now for Splice. 4,000 gold lead. This is definitely going to be a very small Baron power play for H2K. Let's see if another engage comes out. Here comes the unstoppable onslaught intercepted by Shook, and they pull him back and take him down to zero. Primordial Burst, Odawamne eats it right up, and the wild growth is on to keep him alive. Smitty J trying to walk away with a whimsy. Make his step a little bit shorter. And look at the combo from Kaseng and Zerse. The moment that someone gets dragged in, the, the ultimate wears off, instant whimsy. So there is permanent crowd control stacked onto whatever target gets grabbed, and that allows Splice to secure themselves a kill. But there's still Baron Empowered Minions running it down mid. Splice, they actually split themselves up, and they could lose a tower here. They certainly could. Big old minion dematerialized, and that's going to save Splice's mid tower for the time being. It just goes to show H2K still are a sieging threat even after losing their jungler. Niski back up towards the top side. They're going to try and keep these waves pushed, but H2K are definitely not going down without a fight, despite the fact that they haven't been able to find any kills. Oof. Very back and forth game. Baron will now be a not. <laughs> Baron will now no longer be an objective to play around until the next one respawns. Could result in a bit of a slow passage of play for the time being. But Splice, they don't really need to rely on the Baron. Remember, in terms of the Baron taking speed, we saw how quick it was for H2K and how effectively they can zone Splice away from the objective in order to secure it. So I feel like Splice's main goal will be to try and find a fight before the objective spawns and then secure it once they've been able to take out some of the members of H2K. Especially while they've got those item advantages. Look at the Tristana right now, sitting on three. Compare that to only two and a few pieces for Sheriff. Splice can throw their weight around a little bit. Cloud Drake's up. Should be a pretty free objective. Unless Shook can pull some Razzle Dazzle. Grab himself, smite in and out. Not even worth attempting, though. Very late first strike. Looks like Infernal will be on the board. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you should always look to try and get an early Drake because you don't know what's going to spawn next. And I'm sure Splice would have loved to have had a couple of extra Infernals under their belt, but they will not have the opportunity. Instead, now Splice group up in the middle lane. H2K are looking to hold them off as long as they can. Oh, it's going to be hard when Tristan is firing explosive shots. Odoamne tanking up a few more tower shots as it goes. H2K do regroup to push back. And the fans are very excited. I believe, I believe that is the Romanian flag. Uh, yeah. So I would assume that they are, in fact, Splice fans. And I did see a couple of French supporters in the crowd chanting Niski earlier on. So I believe that there are quite a few Splice fans in the audience today. They'll be happy to see Splice win, I would imagine. So far, got to be pretty happy with the 8-0, and zero, 26 and a half minutes into this game. Controlling most of the map, especially focusing on this middle and on the bottom side now, since there's nothing to play for up top. 
That's very true. I imagine the top wave will be cleared out. Niski, level 16, three items finished on the Azir. We've seen a couple uh, rushes of the Banshee's Veil. Vale. We saw it on Nuke Duck yesterday. Now, against Vigar, I think it makes a lot of sense because it really helps that pick potential or mitigate it rather from Selfie. But a good event horizon there from Selfie to deny Odo from the engage, but I feel like they're looking for a fight right now. Now Whimsy up, and there's the pain train charging in, finding the Vigar. He flashes the smash, and let's see how the fight's gonna go. He's taking up all the damage. Promise Q knocks him back up, but he's gonna get melted down. Xerxes with the final shot. And he's still got his ultimate if he wants to wiggle in to grab another. Flash. H2K wounded have to walk away. Flashes up as well, but no Baron available just yet. Another successful engage from Splice. Their eyes are on this mid-tier two. Should be pretty easy to take, even with a massive rupture from Smitty J. It's not going to matter. Their base is in danger of falling to pieces. Fundus comes up as Niski covers the last of the minions. Baron empowered cannon minion. Doing the work, charging his way in. No dematerializer stacks available. Scratch that. Promise Q has one, but he's currently occupying the fountain space, and this is going to be the opening up of the H2K base. Splice flexing their muscles, not keen to give H2K even a single kill in this game. H2K very afraid to engage onto this Splice lineup. Minus 2,000 gold Baron power play. So, Splice, I think, not too upset after losing that objective. It will be spawning in about 50 seconds time. Another opportunity for H2K to regain some control over the game. But in terms of scaling, Splice definitely slightly ahead of the curve as these fourth items are starting to be completed for both Niski and Cobb. Yeah, H2K have had such a hard time when Splice hit the go button. Odo Omni charges in, they've got nothing that can stop him. Xerxes is able to grab someone, pull him back. I mean, it's a hell of a pain train. And unfortunately, they just haven't been able to find an answer this game. The good news for H2K with their Baron taking ability is that that objective will be spawning in 20 seconds. The bad news? They're going to be walking into a nest of wards if they do it. You can see Splice primed and ready. Good ward over the wall, though, from uh, one of the members of H2K that should be able to spot out the beginning of it. That's why you always want to drop a control ward in the Baron pit and outside of it. And, and there we go. To make sure that you do control the river. Not going to rush it down just yet. Waiting for the opportune moment. Seeing if they can find a pick onto H2K first. All right, Shook. Steps forward, gets a ward over the wall. Let's see if Splice want to start up the Baron. Not super keen on it. They don't need to take it, as you mentioned. It's not part of the game plan for this team, not necessarily. If they can grab it, that'd be great. But they are super happy if they were going to peel off instead. Should be easy to take now that Sheriff is backed and looks to return to the team. Nothing doing, no contest. Splice picked that one up, easy. Azir Baron, man. Extremely quick, very easy take there for Splice. Looking like another very convincing game for this uh, for the snakes in yellow. Mm -hmm. I remember the last time what happened when Splice took a Baron. Uh, game ended before Three the buff was minutes. up. Just about. It is rough for H2K though. Remember, like every win is going to be so important for this team to keep that Cinderella story alive, to try and make the playoffs. But right now, they're going to need a miracle to turn this game around. Big gold deficit here. Scaling still strong, but they need time. They need items. Hell, they need some gold, and they need to stop that damn Bannon minion. Oh, look at Zerse, he's going in. Zooming in, gets the impale. Let's see if they got the damage. Instead, Promise Q suppressed, but he's able to turn it back around, get the Glacial Fissure, knock them all up. H2K, stay alive for now. But there's a big wave of minions trying to charge into their base. Kabe, Niski, Kasing, everyone on the splice side trying to keep this push going. They already have lost the inhibitor in the middle, and H2K will not give them a tower up top. Oof, but they can just wait for the next minion wave to arrive. You can see Niski going up to grab it, empower those minions so they move a little bit faster. Zerse also pushing in the mid, and keep your eyes on the bottom wave as well. A big minion stack is starting to group. Splice controlling all three waves extremely nicely, and they're just waiting for Kobe to get into range to start crushing that tower. H2K might already be well looking past this game. The last couple they've got and remember, all they need to do is knock down the Nexus to qualify for the playoffs. Xerxes not with the team. He's going on his own mission down towards the bot to keep things pushed in. And no one from H2K is responding to this. It's just chip damage on the turret. They don't have to rush anything. They're not taking any big risks. But here comes an engage from H2K. All right, Odawamne. He's going to be able to take the train out back the other way. And meanwhile, while this is all happening, H2K realize 
There's a lot of minions and a big scorpion on the bottom of their base. They're going to send Cho'Gath to deal with it, but it might be too late to save this tower. It is already gone, and Smitty J just cannot get there to clean up in time. Spice playing all three lanes beautifully right now. The Infernal Drake has spawned, but nobody cares. H2K just doing their best to defend. A minute and 20 left on the Baron buff. Spice should be able to open up at least the last two inhibitors from H2K. The fantabulous macro that you're talking about, Vetti, is continuing to keep H2K at bay. Desperation trying to push them back, but that tower is going to fall to an explosive charge, and now the inhibitor is bare. Zerse still freely hitting on the bottom side. H2K, if they don't pull something soon, they're going to just slowly lose this game. It's quite right, Pyra. Now the ultimate is available for Odo Omne, but the same can be said for Shook. They're losing the rest of their bases. They try to defend up top. Here comes the engage. They've got to go, but Kabi's already jumped out right now. Smitty J trying to lead the charge, and in from the backside is going to come Zerse. Let's see if he's going to pull anyone back into his own team. He'd have to run right through, but last of the inhibitor is going to fall before it even begins. Minions already on the bottom, already in the mid lane. H2K, they just don't seem to have anything left in the tank right now, and in comes the Scion charging, stopping short, and they're going to pull back one. Let's see if they can take down Smitty J. Emperor's Divide. That's a lot of damage, and that's going to be all they needed. Taking out one, taking out two. Three members remaining. Splice standing tall. Let's see if Oda Wamne can survive the last shot. He's going to flash away, but while everyone's occupied, another triple kill comes in for Kavi. They're going to melt it through, and the pain train is pulling away for Splice. Next stop, playoffs. With that win, Splice secure themselves a spot in the playoffs. Everything that they have been working for finally comes to fruition. They are yet to lock in a position, but they are guaranteed to be top six here in Europe, and we will be seeing them in either the quarterfinals or potentially the semifinals as they make that race towards that bye. They still have the opportunity to snatch that bye, and with the way this team is playing right now, I do not think that is far out of the realm of possibility. Not a single death. 12-0-34. It was not a perfect game. They did lose a Baron. They lost a couple towers, but that was, regardless, a very well-executed and beautiful game from Splice. And for a team like HTK that I think it's been difficult for people to know exactly what to expect out of them week to week, they've had such a surge against some really strong teams, and Splice just completely and utterly shut that down. Felt like that. H2K had a good idea around playing around the Baron, and it felt like that going for the Baron itself was smart, but they then couldn't get the successful fight afterwards. They couldn't really translate that into any more control over the game, and once Splice secured themselves more control over the map, that was it. H2K weren't trying to be proactive, they weren't trying any molastic efforts, and it felt like the Splice were just gradually bleeding them out. But at the same time, Splice did a great job of just not getting engaged on. They just spent so much time stalling and delaying and basically preventing H2K from doing anything while they played on all three lanes very, very cleanly and eventually just tore apart the base. Well, they just they just kept yoinking one member of H2K. You can't fight 4v5 constantly, and, and that was what was so impressive about it. We thought we were in for a long scaling battle, but Splice just scaled a hell of a lot faster. That's what happened. I mean, it was when a slow kills. game, right? I mean, it was still 33 minutes, still keeping up with the average game time that Splice have demonstrated on this patch. Which and is a lot faster than before. It's definitely a lot faster when they were... They had the longest average wins of the regular season. And they would come back into games, like, consistently. Yeah, they were always winning uh, with gold deficits, but now we're seeing a much more well-rounded uh, Splice. We're seeing what I wanted to see, Pyro, which was consistency from this team. Last week, I wasn't sold. This week, I am. Splice, definitely a top team here. In well, we're going we're gonna to hear from Kasing and just a few with Medic, of course, so we'll maybe have them ask about uh, how they've been able to get so much more consistent lately. Well, I imagine we're going to get a chance right now. Yeah, well, before that, we are always eager to know who you think deserves the player of the game, so go over to LOL Esports on Twitter and vote in the poll. Your options, of course, are Zerse, Odawamne, and Niski. I do think it was a big team effort, but those three did stand out. Ooh, yes, I, I agree, I agree. Who would you, who would you, you vote for? That's the one. I'm not entirely sure. I yeah. feel like a very team effort. I think I would edge towards Zerse. I would, too, just because he made the flashy highlight plays, literally very, flashing very on people and impaling them. That's very which, uh, which, of course, sounds super awesome. Now, to hear more from Splice's win, let's send it over to Medic, who's standing by with their support. Thank you very much, Pyra. I am here with the laughing master, Kasing. I think that's what I have to call you from now on. Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That, that means you've won. Winning that game gets you into playoffs. You are secured there, not secured your spot yet. How does it feel to get into playoffs? I mean, making playoffs is definitely like, well, 
really good for me because I wanted top six, and of course, now that you're in playoffs, you're definitely top six for sure. But uh, I think I still want to go a bit higher, maybe top four, but you know, that's why it's my goal anyway. So top four at the end of the regular split? Yes. Or, okay. That's, that's my, like, you're in the running for top two still. You know, you're, at, you're right at the top of that. If G2 yeah, yeah. lose today, you're actually sole possession of top two. If Vitality lose as well. Do you think that's something you should be aiming for? I mean, I think we're definitely aiming for number two because, of course, you know, we're not playing to just troll our last few games, you know, just because we're in top in playoffs. But um, it'll definitely be hard, but I think we can definitely do it. So... Alongside that, you know, the start of the split wasn't the best for you guys. It was kind of a bit inconsistent. Last two weeks, you've gone 2-0, 2-0. What has changed for Splice that have made you a more consistent team? I think the fact that we're more consistent and, you know, the results are showing off is, like, really good for us because the fact that we basically play with, like, an objective now and we, you know, play, how do I say it? You basically play to your win condition. And maybe before, in the 1-1 weeks, we basically kind of kind of trolled, and uh, maybe it might have been me, but basically, I think we just, you know, just played better. I I'm sorry for crashing this, but I just wanted to thank you for saving my life at the end. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's some love there. There's some respect. Oh my God. God. I'm letting you sing. <laughs> uh, did, he, did he just kiss me? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. That's, a, that's some okay. <laughs> te teammate bonding. And alongside that, I've got, I can announce as well, player of the game went to Xerxes, another one of your teammates. He's yeah. really stepped up in the last few weeks. I mean, Xerxes definitely proves that he is one of the best junglers. And, you know, if this game, not even this game, but the last game as well, or yesterday, doesn't show it, then I don't know who the best jungler is. Maybe so Godgillius. I'm going to ask you for a quick call before we go to a break. You, you've got top six left there. G2, Vitality aren't secured yet. Do you think we'll see any surprises with the top six playoff berths? I actually think... I feel like G2 and Misfits... Initially, I would think G2 would be like number two, right? But from what I've seen recently, it hasn't been that good. But maybe because they just haven't, like, meshed as well. Or maybe just have a bad day. But I feel like Misfits has been pretty subpar to what I would expect. So I think Misfits actually maybe will be like number four, five, six. Maybe they might even play, make playoffs because the bottom teams are actually quite good. Yeah, lots of the bottom teams keep winning. We'll have to see if Misfits do make it. Congratulations again on your win and on your kiss from Odo I'm sure Thank you'll you. cherish that forever. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Unstoppable onslaught, the science coming in as well, and there's the impale, the one, two, how do you do? If you can turn around in time, the bullet's coming out, Shook's trying to give him more than they bargained for, but they take him down again, the Romanian rumble of Odo and Xerxes, pushing back Shook with the help of Nitsky, Emperor's Divide, and down to zero. Has already taken out his opposite number, Promise Q soon to fall, that's a double kill for the Tristana, Smitty J, gonna be left for dead, and so is Shook, pushed back by the Emperor's Divide, Splice will leave none alive. It's gonna go, he's taking up all the damage. Promise Q knocks him back up, but he's gonna get melted down. Xerxes with the final shot. And they're gonna pull back one. Let's see if they can take down Smitty J. Emperor's Divide, that's a lot of damage, and that's gonna be all they needed. Taking out one, taking out two. Let's see if Odoamne can survive the last shot. He's going to flash away, but while everyone's occupied, another triple kill comes in for Kave. They're gonna melt it through, and the pain train is pulling away for Splice. Next stop, playoffs. Det handler om arven, hvor forfædres ære, de ofre der smidede vores land. Det handler om Valhalla, krigene kæmpede, kysterne raided. Det handler om den lidenskab og det engagement, vi dedikerer hver dag. Det handler om blod, sveden, tårne for arven i vores store nation.